So have you been a long time Windows laptop user considering switching to a MacBook Pro? Well, in this video, we'll find out if it's worth it. Coming up. Alright my friends, welcome to the Honey Martin SG channel. In this channel, we help still young adults through financial independence and today, we're going to cover one of the aspects improving quality of life. So part of your FI is actually to lead a more fulfilling life. And in this video, we're going to talk about how the new N1 MacBook Pro will improve your work life and your personal life. So right here, we have the N1 MacBook Pro. Okay. This model that I've got here is actually the base model. It's the 8GB memory and the 256GB SSD. So the difference between this new M1 MacBook Pro and the old Intel MacBook Pro is that Apple has now manufactured its own M1 chips in-house instead of buying chips from Intel. So we can expect better integration and better processing power as well as superior battery capacity in this new laptop. So we'll see if it's worth it. Okay, a little backstory here. The last Apple product that I own is actually the iPhone 6 back in 2015, but it died only three years later with a bloated battery. So I'm excited to see how this new MacBook Pro turns out. And some of you may ask, isn't it more cost effective to own a Windows laptop instead of an overpriced MacBook Pro? Well, that's why we're here to find out. So Windows laptops have been traditionally cheaper based on the budget that you have. Even if you have a $1,000 budget, you could get a very decent Windows laptop for your use. More cost effective, right? because you could get a very decent spec for under a thousand dollars so we're gonna see if this baby here is worth it before we go to the actual unboxing let's talk a bit about the packaging so if you have owned a few apple products before you will notice this plastic seal right here i think apple puts in a lot of research in their packaging engineering because it is designed in a way that you don't have to use any tools to open your products so likewise for this plastic seal you don't need any knife or any scissors to actually open it all right so here's the unboxing so it's very easy. You don't have to go through any kind of tools. Also, another thing about the packaging is that the engineers have designed it in a way that when you leave the box, it creates enough time for suspense and excitement. And so we'll see how that goes. Wait for it. Wait for it. Alright, here we go. Okay, so we have the MacBook Pro right here. You can see that it's covered with a plastic seal and they have this kind of pull tab so they can leave it easily. Let's put it right here first. Right in the box, we only have very few items, very minimalistic design, clean and clean look. Here is the USB-C cable for charging the laptop. And here is the paper documents, instruction manual, and Apple stickers. So if you got the space gray version like me, you'll get gray Apple stickers. And if you got the silver one, you'll get a silver one. So that's about it. Put it right here. And in this box, a charger. Not just an ordinary charger, by the way. 61 watt power adapter. Well, I bought this from the Apple Store Singapore, so it comes with a UK plug. Let's put this aside for now and go on to the main laptop. Okay, so first impression on the unboxing experience, I feel that Apple has done a good job in keeping a very clean and lean product design. You also notice that you have much less items in your box itself compared to what you have in a Windows laptop. You probably will get more wires, more adapters, more instruction manuals, more plastic. That's kind of a different feeling from what you get in Apple. You probably don't get that much freebies because Apple itself is a premium brand and you can't expect them to give you that much freebies. So you probably have to purchase them again and that's how Apple marketing works. Alright, so on to the MacBook Pro itself. Let's see what is going on right here. To the MacBook Pro itself, I'm going to unseal this. Alright, aluminium body right here. Very nice matte finish design. You can see that it's reflective on the logo. On the left side here, we have two Thunderbolt USB-C ports. So one is for your power and one is for your other use. You could probably plug in the USB dongle to expand um, your ports. And on the right side, you have a 3.5mm audio jack. So you can plug in your headphones here. Well, there's very little ports for the MacBook Pro. I would expect more than that paying a premium price for this. Apple, you gotta work this, man. Okay, so right now I'm gonna do the one finger lifting test. Now, if you have watched the Apple promo video, you can see one of the executives actually doing this right here. Okay, so apparently you're supposed to be able to leave this with one finger. 
so you don't have to use two hands to open your laptop. Pretty convenient, isn't it? Let's try. Okay, we got that nostalgic Apple chime, so let's take this off. Let me go through some basic setup here. Okay, so first time using a MacBook Pro, probably don't have anything to back up, so I'm going to click not now. They even have Siri on this MacBook Pro, so I'm going to go through the Siri test. Hey Siri, hey Siri, open the documents folder. Hey Siri, show my downloads. Hey Siri, what's the weather like? Hey Siri, what does the rest of my day look like? Okay, so the advantage of MacBook Pro is that it also has Touch ID so you can set up your fingerprints to unlock your laptop easier and it's even more secure so I'll see winning windows over that bit. Okay, let's set it up. So you can also choose from a light mode, dark mode or an auto switching between the light and the dark mode. I'm a dark mode user, I'll pick this. True tone display. Keep going. First look on the MacBook desktop. Wow, a big difference from what we have in Windows. Don't have the icons like my computer, my documents recycle bin on the left. We have everything under here. We also have a search function right here. So Spotlight Search, I believe is super useful. Um, seeing the apps, you could probably open App Store right here. You can search for anything and it comes up instantly. So I think that wins window by a bit because we all like results that are instantaneous, right? Nobody likes to waste time. Let's also go through some of the basic applications that you'll have on your new MacBook Pro. Finder, Launchpad. Safari, Messages, Mail, Maps, pretty much similar to iOS, right? You can be sure that this will integrate nicely with what you have if you have an iPhone, pretty useful and you could also download apps from the App Store. So the thing that I like about Apple product is that it is seamless integration between the devices that you have. You could use both computer apps, also phone apps if it's available on the App Store. It's the best of both worlds actually. And that is something I value from Apple, how Windows will never match in these terms. So wrapping up my overall thoughts for this unboxing of my new MacBook Pro, I'm satisfied with the design, build quality, software, and usability. While there may be the good points, there are definitely some points that they could improve on on the ports. I am super not used to having that few ports on my laptop because when you're using a laptop, you are traveling here and there, right? So you probably need to have at least a USB-A port for your current devices and also maybe a HDMI port that would work very well if you want to pro project something to the screen or a monitor. For a Windows user, you definitely need some time to get used to the new interface. So take your time, watch more YouTube videos and articles to actually read about the tips and tricks that people could do on their MacBook Pro. And I'll probably do a more in-depth review one month later to document my experience on using the new MacBook Pro. In that review video, I would also show you what accessories I have bought to complement your MacBook Pro experience. Probably a USB hub on the side to make sure that I have more accessibility on the port side and also a Bluetooth mouse so that I can work more efficiently. So I'll be working and editing with this new machine right here and we'll see how it goes. Fact is, I fully understand how pricey this product is. So in my next video, I will talk about how to get it cheaper in Singapore, at least $100 off the retail price. So subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you will not miss that video. Alright, so if you have enjoyed the video and felt that you have learned something new today, share it to your friends and family and give this video a thumbs up so that I could create more content like this. Thank you and I wish you all the best in achieving your honeypot money for financial independence. I'll see you guys on the next one.